Yo! Yo, busy ball! Oh, shit! Oh, shit! What's good? Yo, busy. Let me explain something. Let, well, you know. Let me grab my chair. Let me grab my chair. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Okay, Biz. How you doing, baby? Biz, let me tell you the positive thing. The positive thing is the celebration of music. And most of all, I saw the verse with Pac. I knew it. The Bone and Biggie. Yo, I mean... You had the legendary moment like Jada Kiss at Madison Square Garden where everybody finally realized Jada Kiss is one of the greatest. You showed the world last night you're one of the greatest lyricists of all fucking time. You were going crazy Yo, man, last I night. I appreciate that. Shouts out to Bone Thug, to the crew. Shouts out to 3-6 Mafia for being a class act as well. Um, I had a really, really good time, man. I had a real good time, man. Let me tell you something. You're busy. You know, the people don't know no better. I don't know no better. I call Steve Lobel. I call everybody. I says, busy here. The night before, they said, busy's here. I said, oh, shit. Because to me, Busy is equivalent to anybody you go get in the feature. It's like if Busy's there, he gonna handle whoever you bring. Yes, sir. Do you feel that way, Biz? Hell yeah, I definitely feel that way as an MC, man. You know my roots is East Coast when it comes to that and battle rap and how how about my lyrics that I am. You know me, Joe. We done known each other for over a decade, so you know how I get down. Three decades, two and a half decades. I know we want to be young, but, and then people don't know, I try to tell them, I put up a picture yesterday with Bone Thugs, Biggie, Little Kim, Puff, and me. And they don't know the story that you guys were real cool with Pop, and Biggie was on me because you're the first guys that embraced me to be on another level. Bone Thugs was my big homies, okay? Love. Let's keep it 100%. And you guys love Fat Joe, and you took me on the road with you. And so Biggie knew that, and he was like, yo, Joe, I need these guys to get on a record with me. I said, yo, Big, rest in peace. I said, yo, Big, they fuck with pot. And they was like, nah, but they your guys. So I get on y'all, get on Steve Lobel, get on all that. And then y'all go to the studio, and that's how we made Bone and Biggie. Goddamn right. And so I'm sitting there, and you know, I feel different. You know, I love 3 6 Mafia to death, but you know, I'm Bone, th I'm Joey Bone, you know. And you, you know, I might, people, I don't know if these people really understand that, you know, Bone Thugs is my family, my heart. You know, when Big Pun died, Lazy Bone was standing right next to me when I found out. And he stood with me for the funeral and everything. So I feel like people must have think I was, I'm in the crowd going crazy. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the crowd going crazy. Hello, Melissa. Hi. Oh, shit. Melissa made it. Melissa from Trill is in the building. That's my girl. What's up, Melissa? How you doing? Yo, Melissa, come say hi to the people. Because we've been talking about this girl in every recap. Just give them a little wave, Melissa. Hi, everyone. Uh... <laughs> Yo, Biz. Uh, I was so happy. I'm like you, right? So I never wanted to do a versus because I always do. I'm a sore loser and I'm a worse winner. And so... I knew I was going to have a problem with somebody if it wasn't like Jaru, who's my brother. And so I understood where you came from. But I'm glad that we regrouped. And what was that like? I know you was feeling like they was taunting you. Uh, 
They said, suck my dick. You break that down to me. So what got it to the level of you throw the shit at them and all that? Um, you know, like, so, like, a little back history, like, before I got, before I got there, you know, my son, he was really, really sick, and I had to take care of him, so he kind of gave me his cold, and I had to, like, I've been spitting green, nasty mucus, and not able to laugh, not able to, you know, do anything, so I was already feeling, you know, I couldn't go back and forth with the banter, like I wanted to, so I said, let me stay in character because I knew at the end it's going to be all hugs and all kisses. Um, so, you know, the first time that, like, I tried to, uh, like, create some sort of banter and and do a little back and forth, y'all ugly motherfuckers ain't finna be, you know, um, the like I expected maybe a shut the fuck up. Um I expected a maybe who you calling ugly? Y'all motherfuckers da, 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 da. I expected maybe some of that. But I didn't expect, you know what I'm saying, for homie to like talk to me on some, you know what I'm saying, like I'm a street dude. Mm -hmm. And I didn't expect him to say no shit like that. And like my soul made my body react. Like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I couldn't think before I acted. Like, and, you know, that's one of the things that I pride myself on is being a thinking man. But so after that had happened or whatever, I didn't really know what was up. You know, I didn't know if, what was going down. But, you know, I was on. You know, you know, I told them, I said, I come from the projects. In New York, we call it snapping. We say, your mother look like this, your father look, we do that for hours. But the minute another man tell another man SMD, it gets the violence. I mean, I think it's always been that way. So after that, I was like, uh, you know, I called Melissa and she was like, you all right? I said, first of all, I, you, know, I, you know, I let her know I'm not trying to fuck nothing up because I know I wasn't thinking. If I would have, I just don't know how I would have reacted in retrospect. I keep going through it, and I just don't know what else the hell I would have done, you know. Um, so then Lobel gave me a call, and then I heard the people in the crowd chanting my name. And I, Lobel was like, come back, come back, come back. We all on stage. And then my family called me, and they was like, they back on stage, Dad. You know, go back up there. Come on, do it. I'm like, I'm on my way. So... You know, and so the, the the shorty was your son, huh? Did you have your son with you on stage? No, uh, my son called me. Oh, but there was a young a young kid on stage, um, and so the crowd was like, we never knew if Busy's showing up or not. Busy's here. The fight breaks out. Oh fuck! There goes Busy. He's leaving. We're fucked. Bone Thugs fans are fucked. Even though we got the whole crew there, we got Flash, we got Wiz, we got Lazy, we got Grace. It's like we want everybody. And so when you come back, the crowd is like, yes, like he's back. And you got to understand this is that, that shit. And when you come back, the temperature changes. Now you're going blow for blow for blow for blow. You got Easy E. The crowd sung every word to that Easy E verse. And, uh, and what I did realize before the verses is I was going around. This is part of this shit I do, this fucking recap, where I start asking random people in the fucking Pollo Loco, people in the lobby of the hotel, people at the weed spot, who are you going for? And all of L.A. is like, yo, bone is easy. Bone is easy. We going bone. So y'all had the home court advantage to me. Um, I loved how it turned out. Do you think overall this was a great thing for hip hop? I mean, so I want to finish what I was going through, and I do. So when I came back, I felt like as a man and as a business person and as an adult, you know, I wanted to make sure that I apologized to their whole side because they did what they were supposed to do. 
and my side. My side did what they were supposed to do. And I wanted the fans to understand I'm not trying to fuck nothing up. And so then after that, I called, I called Juicy J over. I said, come here, nigga. You seen it. You was there. And, um, you know, uh, we, we said a little something, you know what I mean? And I'll keep that between us. Uh, but as it went on, it was a respect on the floor. And, you know, I was able to ease up a little bit, you know, nod my head to some of their shit. Um, because I understand as, as we're getting to the end, all of this shit's got to end with crossroads and us linking up and shaking hands. I knew that before I walked in. I already knew the plan. I was one, keeping character, and for two, I was a little bit under the weather, so I couldn't, I was saving my voice for the performance because I've been coughing, coughing, coughing. Lizzie, I'm going to ask you this question. Fat Joe was there to support you guys, but I was upstairs minding my business, doing shit bosses do. So I'm up there watching, and Melissa comes, who's right here, and says, listen, both of these guys want to go last. None of them are going to go first. They want that Joe to do a coin toss to see who goes last. The reason I'm explaining this to you, I go out there, I introduce both of y'all, with y'all both family, and I throw, and shout out to Crunchy Black, he's the only one I didn't get to introduce because crazy, <laughs> lazy was wild, like, it was just wild, right? But we did the coin toss. You guys won the coin toss, tails. So you get to go last. Why didn't you guys do first of the month last? Like, I don't know why you guys didn't perform first of the month. The whole fight was over going last. And you okay. got a motherfucking bomb. And let you me, never did the bomb. Let me tell you why. Because of mostly more than anything was because of what happened to Young Dolph. And we wanted to make sure that we were able to say rest in peace to somebody that came from Memphis and bring it all together. It was a very strategic plan. And um, that's what we wanted to do. You know, we wanted to make sure that we did that. I don't know why we didn't do first of the month, but it was like, we felt as though we got so much in the chamber that after we done with three six, we ready for a Wu-Tang or we ready for this or we ready. So, you know, not, we weren't trying to be arrogant. We just understood we got so much that some things we can lean back on and let them, and let them young brothers on their side shine too. You feel me? Yeah, I, I dig it. I dig the tribute. Uh, rest in peace, Young Dolph. Rest in peace, Virgil. Rest yeah. in peace, the wife of Clarence Avon. They got killed by some crazy motherfucker in L.A. in their house. I you know, hip-hop, we've been losing a lot of people. So Crossroads is one of the greatest hip-hop records of all time. And so you ended it on that. I get it. First in the month was definitely, like, you know, I know Bone. So you was actually playing songs that I know and the real fans know, but just the general public might not know it. Like, but but I know it, you know. And uh, first of the month, y'all fucked it. Somebody, the DJ, somebody fucked up not playing first of the month. Whether it may have been earlier, whether because when the fight happened and you came back, I wanted one of the motherfuckers right there. Boom, 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 boom. I wanted a person to mom. He not get. Yeah, I wanted one right there. Like I was waiting for it right there. And then he came back, you know, um, my brother, I love you, man. I understood. And to tell you the truth, now that it's over, thank God for L.A., the crowd, they didn't, because usually when motherfuckers fight on stage, the whole place fight. But the crowd was screaming, don't fight, don't fight, don't fight, because they wanted to see y'all go at it. But for me, I believe the fight and the pause brought more suspense 
and more excitement to the motherfucking versus battle. I'm just telling you what I felt like. I felt like, yo, people must be hitting each other up. Yo, you got to see this shit. This motherfucker wilding. Yo, it's going crazy. I thought it was hip hop, pure hip hop. And it was incredible how grown men came together who actually really love each other and made this thing all the way through. Agree. Let me ask you one last question, Busy Bone. Where do you think you at in the top rappers of all time? I mean, I think like, because like anybody from a group, you know what I mean? I don't think they never really give that, that never really is accrued to anybody in a group. It's just like, you know, Jada was able to, you know, um, step to the, step outside of this group. But it's just difficult for me because, you know, me and my boys, we brothers. And we were kind of taught like nobody is, you know, as brothers, you're not better than your brother. If you get scuffed up, you better come home with a bloody lip just like your brother. Mm -hmm. So that's just the way Mama P and Granny Rose and, and Sis and rest in peace Mama Linda, that's just the way that they taught us, you know, as our four mothers in Bone Thugs. So I don't really think like that, but I'm going to keep on getting at it. I'm going to keep on getting to it. And I ain't gonna... hey, hey, Busy, let me tell you something. Natasha, it's the thuggest, thuggest phone. It's the thuggest, thuggest phone. Man, she sound the same all these years later. Man, she... That shit was amazing. She was tuned up. She was definitely hot. Her mic was definitely hot, man. She was definitely tuned up. My brother, I love you. Busy Bone, one of the greatest of all time. I always do it, but last night, this is why verses is so important, and it's a celebration of music, because last night, the way you fucking shine, Busy, was on another fucking level, bro. I'm watching it as a hip-hop historian. I know the greats. I seen it all, but last night, you was on your shit, my brother. I love you, Busy. I love Stay you. Stay safe. All right, my brother, stay up. Goddamn Busy Bone in the building. And you don't know who I know. Um, damn, he got froze, too. Goddamn, man, what's up?